Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. I'm gonna get a look at something colorful because I know that this video is probably coming out when things aren't so colorful anymore. By request, finally, after many years, doing a video on just some of my favorite products. I get asked to do this video every year and I just never get around to doing it. I think largely because throughout the year when I'm doing my vlogs, I usually just get things and talk about them. If I like them, you see them again. If I don't, then you don't. It's the, I don't know. That's not the same thing, is it? Not the same thing at all as actually going through and listing things off. That's all this is. It's just gonna walk around and list off some of my favorite things. I have 14 things written down here on my list. Some of them are garden related, some of them are pet related, some are just house related. It's, it's a pretty random assortment. They're not really in any type of order, but I am starting with what I think is probably one of my favorite things I have. Yeah, it's the Gorilla Cart. Look at it. You can fill it with all kinds of things. Right now it has a broken pot in it, some pots that I need to take to the nursery can recycling center that's down the road and some caladiums that I need to cut back. Yeah, it's nifty to have around. I got this as a birthday gift a few years ago and it's been a total game changer for me with gardening. I can get so much mulch into this thing. It is amazing. It does have a pretty high weight capacity on it. I think like 600 or 800 pounds. I blew out a tire when I had six bags of pool salt in here, which are 40 pounds a bag. So 240 pounds blew out a tire. And I don't think that should have happened. So that I'm not really thrilled about. Had to change out a tire. Otherwise it's been great. I've gotten a ton of use out of this thing though. I absolutely love the Gorilla Cart. Kind of pricey though. I hadn't thought about that at the time of year. This might be like a gift suggestion video too. Well, you know, you do you. I don't know what your budget is. Some of these products would make good gifts. The time of year might be kind of off with some of the gardening ones, but I don't know, maybe not. Depends on where you live. This, picked this up from Sam's Club and then talked about it, unpacked it in a vlog, gave it a shot and said I didn't want to give a full review on it till I'd use it for a full season. This is the, I think it's called Aqua Joe telescoping sprinkler. It's on a little tripod down there. I did attach a timer to it so I can run it and not have to pay attention to how long it's running. Just turn that little dial and it'll do its thing. You can adjust how wide you want the spray to be, like how far you want it to rotate by turning these little knobs right here. You can go pretty narrow to very, very, very wide. I'm almost 360 degrees. Different spray patterns to choose from, but hopefully you can see. You can't tell because the sun's in my face. It's been nifty. It was like between 30 and $40. I can't remember. There's so many plants that need to be watered out here. And even though I have the drip, I don't have the water pressure to keep it, everything on drip. So, uh, this came in very nifty, especially during the heat spells where we were like up in the hundreds and it was just cooking outside and plants needed a super heavy drink in the morning. I was able to do really, really wide spots where I had containerized plants without actually having to stand out in the heat while watering them. I mean, I tried to not water in the heat. You know what I mean? In the morning when the sun's not autumn is when I do that watering. I suppose the biggest downside to it though would be that it's overhead watering. I really prefer drip irrigations you get the water right at the root zone but it's such a time saver that I just I didn't really care made a big difference oh and you can adjust the angle how far the spread is on it too it felt cheap because it kind of is and I wasn't expecting it to work as well as it did and last as long as it did but this thing got a ton of use and really freed up a lot of time for me when it comes to being outside being able to do things I enjoy more than watering. I like watering to an extent, but after a while when it's really hot, it gets old after a while. Back on the topic of watering, drip tubing. Another game changer. Love this stuff. I usually use adjustable emitters, which I still really, really like to use. But this, I just noticed by having the quarter inch tube in there, I think that this one is has a hole every six inches on it. The spread was much more even. The plants were getting watered more evenly, and I really like that. I'm not sure about the overwintering capabilities, like are these gonna crack and fall apart after they go through a winter outdoors? I have too many drip heads out here to be going through and pulling all my drip heads every winter. I just, I don't do that. I just disconnect them, let the water flow out, and I'll usually loosen the heads on them so that everything can flush through, but that's it. So I have to wait and see how well it holds up, but I mean, it really, it's been nice. The plants that I was able to put this on this year, did more growing this year than they have in other years. So that's just one of those things where I assume that that's because of the more even coverage. Gecko watering wand. It's one of the shorter ones. I love this watering wand. You can change the head on it. I'm just using the one that came with it. It is weathered. I've gotten a lot of use out of this this year. The reason I like this watering wand so much is because, well, it actually works. I have terrible water pressure, so I've tried the drams and all the other watering wands, and the water ends up coming out the tip and just, 
it just kind of pulls up into a single stream, which that that defeats the purpose of a watering wand, right? But this one, the water comes out in that nice, fun, showery pattern I'd show you, but the water's turned off. It's been in other videos though. I really do like this kind of on the pricey side with as much as I'm out here, I was like, you know what, it's okay. And well, and I didn't pay for it, it was a birthday gift. Nice, even coverage, even with my lower water pressure. It's not terribly low, but like I said, if I'm not getting a good shower out of the regular ones, and that's how I know that there's not enough water pressure. That's actually going off subject here for just a moment, why I have this giant ugly hose. It's a one inch hose, it's where you get the best pressure, but it's super ugly can't find an affordable hose reel to put it in. It doesn't come in other colors. I actually can't even find these for sale anymore, at least not for an affordable price. They're like $400 ones I can find, but that what well, that's absolutely not going to happen. No way. Number five. I forgot to give these numbers what I was going through. Number five, a Vapo Rust. Used this in a vlog a while ago. It's just a product you soak your rusty things in and the rust just melts right off of them. It worked wonderfully, like magic. I absolutely love that product. That would be a funny thing to give someone if you're watching this for gift ideas. Just a big gallon of rust remover. It really works. You can use it on shovels and larger things just by like soaking paper towels in it. Soaking the paper towels in the product and then laying it on top of the shovel blades for like, I don't know, a day or so. And the rust still comes off. So it's not only for little things that need to be soaked. Oh, and the next one. I don't have this out here, but I will lay some footage over the Yaiwer Flameless Candles. I know, random, but I have a thing with flameless candles and that I love them. The ones with that little faux thing that flicks around on top, but all the ones that I get look pretty dumb. And I'm picky with my flameless candles when I like them to not look too terribly fake. And I like them to have a built-in timer. So I got some from Sam's last year that had a little switch on the bottom where you just turn them on or flip the switch to set it to a timer. So if you want to turn on at seven every day, then you flip it to timer at seven o'clock and then it'll run for a few hours and turn off on its own love that feature, but they just, they didn't look right. Like they didn't look like candles, but these actually look like candles. They have a slight glow inside of them, which is really pretty to look at. And they have a remote control with a timer on it. You can do different settings with it. It's like $14.99 for a three pack. With my fish tanks, I don't like to have too many real candles going in the house and it's a fire hazard, but I love the ambiance of the fire. So it's, it's random, but flameless candles, Love them. And then the next one's a dog treat and it turbo ran off with it. I'll go see if I can find it. Okay, got it. Eh, it's just a dog toy, but this has been fantastic with having a puppy. This is the Starmark Everlasting Sprocket dog toy slash treat. So it comes with this hard disc in it that takes the dogs a long time to lick their way through. It's a great toy to occupy them, kind of like a Kong if you have a filling in it, but I don't have to refill it. This has been worn down some. He's had this for like a week and a half, but it still has a ways to go. You can get refills to put inside of them. They even make a dome, like a lid you can put on top. I'm pretty sure they do. I think I read that they do, that you can put treats inside of and make it into a treat puzzle. Kind of pricey, sort of. So the smalls, when I was at PetSmart, they were like $14.99 and then the mediums were more. For whatever reason, the large, which is what this is, were $5. So of course I got two of them. That was a great deal. I don't know why they're only $5. That's not normal, but it's been a worthwhile investment because it has been a great puppy sitter for when I just need a moment to breathe and the puppies go nuts. It is one of those toys that you give your dog where if you just let them have it all the time, they lose interest fairly quickly. So I make sure he has like special sprocket time and then I take it away from him. So it's, it's a high reward type of treat, but it's been absolutely fantastic. Kongs work well too. Kongs are also pricey and you got to refill them and that gets messy. I usually just put peanut butter in them. So it doesn't have any xylitol in them. Then I freeze them. Works well, but again, it's just nice to not having to mess with that step. So that's what this has been for. Love this product. And it smells nice. I don't think it's supposed to because it says that it's chicken flavor, but I, it smells like butterscotch. I don't know what kind of chickens they've been sniffing, but Maybe it's just this one, I don't know. Number eight, Elta MD sunscreen. It's a great product. I know that that seems random, but as gardeners, we should be taking protection from the sun very seriously. And I am crazy picky about my sunscreen. 
I use the UV Clear, the UV Sport, and the UV Restore. When it comes to facial sunscreen, which is what I use this for, I use different sunscreen on my body, but I don't like sunscreens that stick or that, uh, that's not the right word, but that feel cakey. I don't want to feel like I'm wearing anything. And that's been an issue with every facial sunscreen I've ever tried is that they feel thick, they feel heavy. When you start to sweat or it's humid that you can feel it coming out of your pores. I just absolutely despise that feeling. It's so uncomfortable. I hate it. But with the UV Clear Sport and Restore, I really don't notice that. One of them is tinted, which was a bit alarming the first time I put it on and I looked pretty dead because it over, over, um, what's the word, evened out. It over evened out my skin tone. It didn't look quite right, but it was effective. And they have products in them that are good for your skin. So that's my other thing with sunscreen. If I'm going to be lathering this stuff on potentially two to three times a day, depending on how much I'm outside, I really want it to do extra for my skin and uh, all of these do different things. The Sport is the one I use the most because it's the water resistant one. It's the waterproof one. It's for when you're being really active outside, sweating, swimming. You know what I mean? There's you know, like squalane, niacinamide. The, what's in them varies from product to product, but Pretty much all of them have something in them that's good for your skin. That's in addition to protecting you from the sun. Hose and sprayer, which still has a little bit of fertilizer in it. This is the Jax Classic one. I really, really, really like this one because it's easier to know what you're doing. I do think they could have put a better sticker on the top of it. I will say that much. But a lot of them, how you fill them can get confusing. With this one, it has a dial so you can switch it from a full strength fertilizing to a half down to a quarter, turn it off. And then it has a granular setting for larger beds. That's nice when I'm out here doing my fertilizing because there are some plants like my ferns, orchids, a lot of plants where I only ever do a quarter strength for them so I can be fertilizing everything. And then as I'm going along, I just turn this dial and boom, I can go ahead and water those at the same time and then turn it back, which would be easier to do with two hands, but you turn it back to go back to fertilizing your plants like you regularly would. It's just been nifty. I like the ease with that one, not having to like guess and go through your ratios and everything. Okay, the next one isn't here right now. You've seen it in a lot of videos probably, but someone's borrowing it. It's my dolly, the Costco furniture cart, the three-in-one cart where you can use it as just a regular cart or you can lay it down flat or you can have it at an angle. That is an essential. That's a necessity for me with the amount of moving plants I do out here. I wouldn't be able to do it without that cart. I absolutely love it. I don't know if the one that I have is still one that's being sold. I've had it for a really long time. Hopefully I have something up here on the screen that's just representative of like the energy of that cart. Energy, just what that cart does, a three-in-one cart. Any three-in-one cart with a good load capacity and a nice big lip on it so you can fit a big pot on it. I love it. And a grow light. So number 11, that's the Sansi LED grow bulbs. I'm really picky about my grow lights something I've talked about here on the channel before. I don't like to talk too much about them because I think a lot of the ones that are out there are overpriced for what they actually are. I've noticed specifically with these LED grow bulbs that they have a nice far reach on them, which goes back to the par and a discussion that would take an entire different video. But for what you get for like $35 to $40, the price varies on them. I can have them a few feet up from my plants. Like some of them, my croton, this one, that croton right there, those bulbs are a good probably three and a half to four feet above it, and it grows and thrives with those bulbs above it. With most grow lights, they need to be within two feet. Don't take that too seriously. Don't start moving your grow lights down right on top of your plants. It depends on which one you have, the amount of par that they have, all the directions for them. But for a bulb that just screws into something to be able to be hung that high above all the plants and to still get growth out of them that's not all stretched and leggy, that means it's a good bulb. And I know it's powerful, because the foliage on the croton darkens out when it's underneath it. And that's something that this type of croton right here does when they're getting a lot of light. You can even kind of still see some of that darker. Now, nah, most of it's gone. The growth tips closer to the bulbs get darker. You get it. That means that they're getting ample light. And this is a plant that can take a good amount of light. Just being able to see that when I'm using these bulbs, how the plants are responding to them, I know that it's a good bulb because the plant's growing. I don't have a par meter or a lot of the scientific equipment that costs hundreds of dollars to break down and analyze the actual bulb. I don't think that's necessary for a $35 grow bulb. So I'm just saying anecdotally, I'm getting as good, actually better results from these CNC LED grow light bulbs than I have from the majority of the like Amazon grow lights that I've tried that some of them cost like three or four times as much and take up a lot of space. They're kind of ugly. Not that these are pretty, but 
you know, those big black box LEDs. Oh, number 12, those glass domes that I put over a lot of things, just any bell cloche, absolutely love them. But they just look nice. I think they're pretty. I like having plants inside of a little bell. Also, I think it makes it easier to take care of them when they're in the house. They're just good inside their little bell. The Gardner Supply three gallon watering can that I got last winter. I love that. I know it's just a watering can. It's kind of pricey for a watering can, though I do think the price has come down since I got mine. It can hold so much water. I know it's only like a gallon more than a typical two gallon watering can, but that makes a difference when you're walking around the house watering big plants. Yeah, it's a little bit more to carry, but it's less trips to the sink. And I like the distance of the spout that comes out on it. It's like just the right length. So when you go to tilt it, the water is not pouring out of the hole that you fill it up with at the top. It's just a watering can, but I really like it. Oh, lastly, my all time favorite product that I think might be my favorite thing I've ever purchased, my Bissell Crosswave Cordless Max. I know, not gardening related, but hey, we drank dirt in the house. It was expensive. I was so on the fence about buying this product. I mean, I went back and forth on it for like six weeks before I finally bit the bullet and got it. With the dogs and the cats, I usually have to vacuum the kitchen like three times a week, if not more. And well, really the whole house three times a week, but the kitchen's where I notice it the most. And then mop twice a week, so it's just a lot of hair. The dogs, the cats, own parrots and tortoise. This thing, it makes it so much easier because it vacuums and mops at the same time. There's an extra step involved with having to take the, the collection chamber out and dump it and clean it every time you use it, but it's really not that big a deal. You get used to it. It's been a time saver and anything that saves me time I'm down for, but like I said, it was very expensive. More expensive than my vacuums. I have Dyson vacuums, but I got them all refurbished for like, I don't know, I think they're like 150 bucks. They still had a manufacturer's warranty. So I was like, well, that's fine. As long as it works and has a warranty, I don't care. They've been great. So it's the most money I've ever spent on something for cleaning the house. As I mentioned though, it saves me so much time. I love that it vacuums and mops at the same time. Floor always looks clean, smells nice with the certain Bissell products. I know it was worth the money to me because I didn't have buyer's remorse. And usually if I spend more than like 30 or $40 on something, I have buyer's remorse. Oh, and I love that it actually sucks up the dirty water. With mopping, I, okay, maybe this is a bit much. It is a bit much. When I mop, you probably, this, you're gonna judge me for this, but usually when I mop, I'll go over the floor once and then I'll go over it again and then I'll go over it again. And I will usually mop until the mop water starts to be clear when I'm wringing out the mop. And that usually takes like four or five passes. It doesn't have to be crystal clear, but if it's not coming up clear, then that means the floor's not clean, right? So that's why I like the Bissell because it sucks all the dirty stuff up instead of just spreading it around and then having to have it wick up into a mop and squeeze it out. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really like it. I'm nerding out over my Bissell. I love that Bissell. And they had great customer service. It broke on me after a few months and they were like, okay, we'll send you a new one. They just sent it right to me. So that was great. Okay, there it is. Favorite things, favorite products, maybe good gifts for the holidays for people. I don't know, some kind of random. I do think it'd be funny to give someone a gallon of a vapor rust for the holidays. I'm gonna remember that. All right, comment down below. What are some of your favorite products? Some things you just love to have around. Great gift ideas for gardeners. Put all down there and just say hi. I love talking to everybody. Trying to take it all in. Because by the time this video comes out, none of this will be out here. It's just going to be brown and gloomy. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.